Hello, my grade one students. Today, I want to introduce you to someone really special. This is my pet zebra, a close-up photograph of him. You don't believe me? What's, what's wrong? Oh, maybe I put in the wrong photograph. Oh, maybe this is the right photograph of my zebra. Hmm. My zebra and I love to talk about patterns. He loves patterns so much that he can look down on his bedroom floor and he can get excited about this brick pattern. And why does he get excited? Because he can move and it's equal. He can move and it's equal. He can move in a different direction as well and it'll be equal. See? He can move again. It's equal. Well, one day a very sad thing happened to my zebra. A water main broke under his bedroom floor. And look what happened. Oh no, it's a disaster. His beautiful pattern was destroyed. From order, we've gone to chaos. And it even got worse because some of, the, some of them broke. Oh, but you know what? My zebra got over it. He gets over these things. There's a picture of it. My zebra got over these, this by going out into nature. And in nature, he observes order all over the place. And that, that made him better. And that night, I took him out to an art gallery. And we love going to art galleries because we can discuss about order and chaos. And it's also always nice to have opposites we can discuss. So the opposite of order is chaos. Which of these pictures is more orderly? Which one is more order and which one less? Well, the one on the right has got more order because all of the squares are the same size. The one of, on the left is more chaotic because the squares are of different sizes. Here's another picture. We can argue and have our own opinion about which of these is more ordered and which one is more chaotic. My zebra loves the one on the right because he sees dark pink, light pink, dark pink, light pink. But I like the one on the right because it reminds me of four fingers pointing in this direction, four fingers pointing in this direction. So we disagree. Both of us like circles. And on the left, we have a little circle embedded in a bigger circle, and a bigger circle, and a bigger circle, and a bigger circle. My zebra loves that too. And we also like circles repeating, on, like on the one on the right, in that grid. So my zebra has a lot of friends that he loves to discuss patterns with. One friend that turned into an enemy really quickly was this bee who landed on my zebra's nose and he started to talk and he said I've got just as much pattern as you do and the zebra said what are you talking about and the zebra and the little bee said look my left side is equal to my right side it's perfectly equal and the zebra said I don't think so there's something wrong Nobody can be that perfect. And the zebra was right, because this was a real picture of the bee. And you see his left side isn't quite equal to his right side. It's nearly equal. But you know what? I think the right wing is a little bit longer, don't you? Hmm. Here's another one of my zebra's friends. It's a spider. And let's look close up. I love that symmetry, and I think my zebra does too. Look at all those eyes. And here's a fly. Now is a good time, I think, to go and create your own uh, bug. And I think you should draw a ladybug. And you can choose as many dots as you like on each side of the ladybug. But you want to make the left equal to the right. Not all creatures uh, agree with the zebra on pattern. And 
one of the ones that disagrees the most is this little crab this little crab he's a fiddler crab and fiddler crabs have got one side of the one arm bigger than the other oh my gosh he really doesn't think left should be equal to right he thinks the right should be really big and the left should be itsy bitsy but even the fiddler crab has to admit that there's beautiful patterns on his beach as he scuttles across it after the tide has gone out. Humans also have got a lot of symmetry. Here's a woman from a country called Iran. And this woman, look at her face. There's something funny about it, isn't there? Well, you know what? Nobody is perfectly symmetric, and this woman isn't either. This is what she really looks like. So this is the left is equal to right, and this is left is nearly equal to right. Sometimes you'll, you'll see a reflection in a lake, and that reflection is not perfect. Here, it looks perfect, but that's too good to be true. Here's the real, the real picture, and you can see that up is nearly equal to down, but not quite. One day my zebra was walking by the shore and he made a new friend. It was a starfish. And the starfish said, look at me, my left is equal to my right, nearly. But even more than that, watch this, watch what I can do. I can do a pirouette. Five times I can turn around are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. And each time that I turn, I'm about the same. And the zebra thought that this was really neat. And he asked, do you have any brothers and sisters? Any cousins? Yes, I do. And here was one of them. And the zebra said, I think that you can turn around too and do a pirouette as well. Am I right? And this uh, star son said, Yes, I can, but I can do it eight times. Watch me. You ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow, said the zebra. That is special. Do you have any other cousins that can do even more? Well, we've got a lazy cousin. But he, he doesn't want to do any movement. He's, he's too lazy. But look at that. He's got 13 arms. Wow, said the zebra. That's a lot of arms. These starfish really like um, these circle patterns whenever they go to the art gallery. These are from Jared Tarbell. Look at them close up. Look at that order. Is there also chaos there? Hmm, I wonder. M.C. Escher has got to be the mathematician's favorite artist of all. And the starfish love him as well, too, because he specializes in a lot of symmetries. Look at this one. Now, do you think that these snakes brag about left is equal to right? Do you think so? Well, let's, let's see. Let's see if left is equal to right. Uh-oh, it's not. See the tails? They curve around in a different direction whenever, we f whenever they go left to right. So no, left is not equal to right here. Hmm. But you know what the snakes do brag about? They brag about their ability to turn around. Watch this. You see? They turned around. They did kind of a pirouette. Okay, close your eyes, everybody. Okay. Did I move the snakes? Open your eyes. Did I move the snakes? No, I didn't. Okay, close your eyes again. Open them. Okay, did I move the snakes that time? Well, that time I did. So you see, very difficult uh, to tell if I've moved the snakes or not because there's so much order here. Yeah. Let's see what we could do. Why don't we think about a way to turn this rotational symmetry into a different type of symmetry. We could go out to the parking lot 
and we could look at a wheel. Yeah, maybe we'll bring some paint and we'll bring some paper and we will paint the tire and then roll it over, maybe get a parent to drive their car over the paper. You shouldn't try driving, of course, because grade one students uh, probably aren't tall enough to look out the windshield. Let your parents drive and see what patterns result. It might look something like this on the paper. Hmm. Well, M.C. Escher loved this type of pattern too. Mathematicians call it translational symmetry, but that's we don't need to use those big words. We can just say, uh, okay, let's push the dogs forward. Oh, that's hard. They're hard to push forward. Let's try it again. Okay. Uh, close your eyes. Okay. Did I push them forward? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> let's try it again. I saw somebody peeking. You can't do that. Okay, so uh, yeah, these these dogs um, can be pushed forward, and uh, M. C. Escher loved creating this type of symmetry, these really rich order. Now our zebra is going to talk about walking in the garden one day in his dreams, and this was a flower that he saw in his dreams, and I think we're going to call that zooming symmetry. But whenever he went out to his real garden, he didn't see this. Instead, he saw something much more complex and less obvious. What is it? Well, what these flowers are exhibiting is something called, I don't know what we should call it. Maybe we should call it spiral symmetry. See, because there's spirals that, that go in here. Yeah, maybe spiral symmetry. And whenever we we rotate and zoom, it's the same. Do you want to try it again? Okay, rotate and zoom, and it's the same. Yeah, so the zebra was very impressed with this kind of symmetry. He, he didn't really understand it, and, and, uh, but he, he loves, he doesn't have to understand things all the time to enjoy it. How beautiful they look. So, what has the zebra talked about today? Well, uh, first of all, he's talked about uh, the importance of having two different sets of words. One to describe something that's ordered, another to describe something that's chaotic. Those are my two favorite words, but you can choose any words that you want as long as they lie on different sides of the spectrum. Uh, he also talked about the importance of opinion. You should have opinion about which of these um, you like more, which one has got more order, why it has order, where the order is, where is there, where is there chaos. Um, and also to, to discuss with your other students um, about your, your opinions. What I really like to do is I like to set up these textures by Patrick Hosley on the blackboard and to say, okay, we'll put the most ordered ones on the left and the most chaotic ones on the right. Okay, let's, let's make a line. And the students can organize them as they see fit and disagree with each other. We also looked at left-right symmetry turning around or rotational symmetry. Again, the words here, uh, I don't find words uh, that important. This is a math class, not an English class. Movement uh, symmetry or translational symmetry. And then we talked about some zooming symmetry. I hope you enjoyed it. And the zebra certainly did. Bye-bye. Bye.